In this video, we're going to cover Sega Saturn emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Sega Saturn emulation is one of my favorite things to do on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. I don't know what it is about the Saturn, but I just absolutely have been adoring it since I picked one up in 2016. And the fact that emulation for it has finally come around is just awesome. That being said, getting it set up for Xbox Series X and S isn't the most straightforward process. So let's dive in. Now before we get started, this guide is a continuation of my How to Install RetroArch on Xbox Series X and S guide. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend going back and watching over the advanced setup section parts here at the end of the video, as there are things included in it that I am going to be touching on. Now our first step to getting Sega Saturn games up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch is to get a Sega Saturn BIOS file. If you are wanting to back up your own Sega Saturn BIOS file, I do have a video guide on how to do so over on my channel, link will be in the description. Or you know, you could resort to the shady parts of the net to find one. I really don't care which way you do it, just don't ask me for illegal download links because I won't be giving them to you. so there we go. But once you have your BIOS files sourced, we do need to name them according to the region of games we're going to be playing. So if you have a US or European BIOS file, it needs to be named mpr-17933.bin. If you also want to play Japanese games, you will need to source a Japanese BIOS file and name it sega-101.bin. But once you have your BIOS file and named it correctly, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So if you follow the advanced setup section on my how to install RetroArch guide, this is actually really easy. We just got to go into our development files file share, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, the system folder that we made and redirected our RetroArch install to use, and drop it right inside. Done. But if you're still relying on my files explorer and using the Q drive, you'll just need to add it to a USB drive. So just open up a USB drive, drop it right on in. Take it out of your computer, put it into your Xbox. From here, open up My Files Explorer. Navigate to Removable Storage Devices. Open up your USB thumb drive. Select the Sega Saturn BIOS file and press Start. Copy file. Now navigate over to Isolated Storage. Navigate up to here where it says Packages and press A. Choose your RetroArch folder, it's usually the top one. Go down to Local State. And if you have all of your RetroArch folders in here, it means you're in the right spot. So find your system folder. Find an empty space near the top here so you can actually see the buttons here. And tell it to paste it in. And there we go. Sega Saturn Bio pl BIOS placed using My Files Explorer. So now we can just go ahead and quit out. With the BIOS file in place, next thing we need are Sega Saturn games. I have recently uploaded a video on how to dump your own Sega Saturn games using the PC version of RetroArch. Link will be in the description below for this one if you happen to have a big physical collection. Or as always, you can resort to the shady parts of the net, but again, no download links are going to be provided as that is illegal. And I don't give a crap if you don't give a crap about that, but I do. So, meh, stop it. But now let's talk about the format for Sega Saturn games real quick. So Sega Saturn games should come in a bin Q format. So a Q file and a bin game. If they are in a different format for you, chances are they're not a very good dump. And you'll want to try to find just the standard bin Q format. Now a number of people who illegally download this stuff get really bad versions. And then they also rename the Q files and the bin files, which ends up breaking them. So you want to make sure that you have good Q files. So if you grab a Q file, it'll show you the file name that it is looking for for the bin file. So if this doesn't match what your bin file is named, it's not going to work in Beetle Saturn. You're going to get boot to the BIOS screen and that is just how it is. So if the file that it's looking for here isn't named correctly, just rename it to what your bin file is and save it and it should work again. Just a little troubleshooting tip there for you. Now another thing to note about Beetle Saturn, Saturn games will only work from USB using it. If you put them on the internal SSD, it will only boot you to the BIOS screen and you will be stuck there. Games have to be on USB. But because of this, there is a known limitation with Xbox dev mode, where multi-bin files don't typically work with it. So for example, my copy of Panzer Dragoon here is a multi-bin game. There's 16 bins and a Q file. Normally this would not boot 
under USB in Xbox dev mode. But during my recent testing, it actually is working and I haven't noticed any problems. The music was all there, so maybe the limitation is finally being worked on. I don't know. I'm not a developer of this version of RetroArch. I can only share my test results with you. So if you have multi-bin games, you could try loading them directly onto USB and seeing if they work. Or alternatively, you could convert these types of games over to Chud format. I'll have a link in the description where you could download Chudman. And once you have it downloaded, you could just get it extracted. And you could pull the files into your multi-bin game and run the Q or GDI to chud.bat. And it will compress all of these multi-bin games into a single chud file that will run perfectly fine from USB and at a smaller size. Again, this doesn't seem to be as necessary as it used to be, but I figured I would still share the step with you regardless. You could try the games out just in multi-bin format, see if they work. If they do, cool. If they don't, convert it to chud, try it again, and it should work. As long as that Q file was correct the first time like I just previously showed. But once that conversion's complete, you could delete all the other files inside your game folder, because we don't really need them anymore, because we have the single chud file. There we go. So now that all of our games are prepared, we just need to add this to our USB drive. So I'm just gonna open up my USB drive and drag my Saturn games right on in and let it do its thing. And once those games have finished copying over, we are ready to move over to the Xbox. Now back over on the Xbox, we can boot into RetroArch. And we can begin loading up our Sega Saturn content. But one thing I recommend checking before you do, if you go into Load Core, press up on your D-pad to go up to Sega, you could select the Sega Saturn Beetle Saturn Core, and if you go into Information, and then Core Information, this screen will let you know if your Sega Saturn BIOS file is being detected properly. So as you can see, I don't have a Japanese Saturn BIOS, but I do have my US one and it says present instead of missing. So it is seeing my BIOS file, which means that I know my games should work when I tell them to load. If you plan on playing the King of Fighters or Ultraman, it also shows you those BIOS files that it requires there as well. You'd play some just like any of the others, but I don't have those games, so I can't really demo it. It's a nice little troubleshooting step just to help you narrow down any potential issues you might have. If it shows that your BIOS is missing, it's not in the right spot. Anyways, now we can begin loading up Saturn games. One way to do so is to go to load content, navigate to your USB drive, go to your Saturn games folder, select a game, and load up the Q file. And then it'll ask you for a core, so you would choose a Beetle Saturn. And I already had that core open, so it just trolled me. That's fine. But then you just press A and it should boot up and let you play it. I don't personally care for this method, honestly. So what I like to do instead is make a game's playlist by going to Import Content, Manual Scan, Content Directory, choose your Sega Saturn Games folder on your USB drive. System Name, press uh, right on the D-pad to go down to Sega and find Sega Saturn. Default Core, right on the D-pad to go down to Sega again and choose Beetle Saturn. And now we're going to need to do a little bit of extra work here. So we're going to go into file extensions because we don't want to just run the scan like this. It will pick up every bin and queue file. So you'll have multiple entries for every game. So what we want to do instead is just search for the queue files. So head into the search and type C U E for Q. And if you converted any of your games to Chud format, you'll put a space and type in C H D. And once you have that set, press start. Make sure scan recursively is on so it looks inside those subfolders. Do not have these games compressed. And once you're ready to go, you can start the scan. And once that scan's completed, you'll have a new Saturn playlist entry here on the left. And there we go. We have uh, Command & Conquer GDI and Nod, Mega Man 8, Mega Man X4, my Panzer Dragoon game, which I converted to Chud format. It was able to find that just fine. Resident Evil and Tomb Raider. So all my Saturn games were picked up perfectly. But then to play a game, all we need to do is go up to it and tell it to run. And as long as your BIOS file is detected and isn't a bad BIOS file, you will begin loading up your games. And there we go, Sega Saturn games up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. 
Beetle Saturn is still to this day the most accurate Sega Saturn emulator there is. It doesn't have some of the features that people like, like upscaling yet, but the ability to be able to play an overwhelming majority of the Saturn library without issue is way more important to me personally. So for those of you looking to get Saturn games up and running, that's most of the basics here. There are a number of optional things we could do here, such as control setup. So if you go into your RetroArch quick menu and scroll down to controls, and go into your port 1 controls, you can see in the device types that there are a number of different options available to us for Sega Saturn games. One of which being the 3D controller, which is good for games like Panzer Dragoon 2. You can play with an analog stick. So keep those options in mind if you have different games that could use different controller types. And then for multi-disc games, you can also attempt to change discs and stuff within the disc control option menu by hitting the eject button, loading a new disc, and inserting it. I haven't really had much success on Saturn in Xbox with this option, but results may vary. But now let's go over some of the core options available to us within Beetle Saturn. There aren't that many, so it shouldn't take too long. So if you go into your quick menu, or if you already were in your quick menu, you can go up to Options. And our first option is System Region. This will let you choose the region for your Sega Saturn. Auto Detect should work in most cases, but if you need to manually set it, this is where you do it. Next up, we have cartridge type. This is set to auto detect by default, but you could set this to a backup memory, extended RAM, or one of those King of Fighters or Ultraman uh, carts that require those extra BIOS files. I like to set mine to backup memory just so I have extra save space over the uh, Saturn's internal memory. Next up, we have a couple of multi-tap adapter options. You can have a six player adapter on port one or port two. Next, you can configure the analog stick dead zones for using the 3D control pad. Um, as you saw in the control options earlier. And same with the trigger dead zones. 15% works pretty well on these. If you want it to be a little bit smaller, you could do so here. Next up, mouse sensitivity. We don't have mouse support in the Xbox version of RetroArch as of this video, so this isn't very helpful. Uh, same thing with light gun stuff. That doesn't really work for us here, so we can't really do anything with it. Next, we have CD image cache, and this is an option that will load the entire Sega Saturn game image into memory. It will make startup times longer, but will also have a consistent performance for your game image. I don't think it's really necessary on Xbox, but you can mess with it if you want to. Next up, mid-frame input synchronization. So for those of you that are more susceptible to input lag, turn this option on. The Xbox CPU should be more than powerful enough to handle this option. If you get lag in a game where you didn't have lag before, just turn it off. Automatically set RTC on game load, leave this on. Next up, BIOS language, pretty self-explanatory. Choose your language. Next, we have horizontal overscan mask. So you could choose an, a pixel amount to crop the image to. So if you have some garbage data on certain bounds, you can crop it out. Then we have some scan line options. I'm not really gonna cover these. And our last option is to enable horizontal blend, which is a blurring effect that just softens up the image of your Saturn emulation. So as you can see, it's a lot softer, gets rid of the sharp, pixel edges, so a lot of you might prefer this. Looks pretty good, but personal preference if you want the sharper pixels or the softer pixels. But that's gonna do it as far as core options are concerned. So if there are options you wanna have set for certain games but not others, you can go into manage core options and save them as a game options file. So that way every time you load up that specific game, these options will greet you. Really useful. But that's pretty much gonna do it as far as Sega Saturn emulation on the Xbox Series X and S is concerned. A little bit of extra setup required for this one thanks to the need of a BIOS file and the fact that its games can only be run from USB. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on the channel. Goes a long way to helping us get this place growing and hitting our goals. We appreciate each and every one of you so much for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, there's also the join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that you could check out. A little really goes a long way to helping us keep the place going and we are just so grateful to every single one of our current champions who have done so. You are all such freaking rock stars and we can't thank you all enough. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.